Good night, everybody. And now it's time for another story read by Mary T. And tonight's story is called A Triumph for Freedom in Dublin and South Africa, written by Lean Power. The 15-seater coach approached the Cape Town waterfront under the imposing view of Table Mountain, its flat top covered by spilling cloud to form the iconic tablecloth. In the distance, a huddled gathering had assembled, bringing the normal free-flowing traffic to a crawl. A noted celebrity was the magnet. Our driver and guide, Pembo, nonchalantly announced, there's a distinguished visitor in town, our president. We tourists were flabbergasted to realise we were about to experience a once in a lifetime experience. There was on the podium, clearly visible, 20 metres away stood the iconic and inspirational figure of Nelson Mandela. A sudden surge towards the viewing window of the coach strained necks and brought a clicking telescopic cameras to life. It was an ironic coincidence. Our planned visit that morning was to District 6 Museum. The museum which tells the story of the tyranny that was South Africa's apartheid system. It represented segregation, apartness, humiliation and abuse. White supremacists oppressed fellow humans with a different skin colour. Racism was even enshrined in law. Just over nine years had elapsed since Mandela's historic inauguration, a relatively short time to undo a culture deeply ingrained. This was all too obvious as later that afternoon we visited one of the many townships that housed millions of those victims, wooden and tin shacks in the most primitive and inhumane conditions is their legacy. Notwithstanding the poverty of progress, sight cannot be lost for one second of Mandela's heroic and lifelong efforts. He was apartheid's greatest adversary. Following the treason trials, he was prepared to die for the cause, but instead was condemned, condemned to jail for 27 harrowing years, 18 of which were endured on Robben Island. The next day we visited that unforgiven bastion of incarceration. It was humbling to see where the great Mandela, prisoner number 446, stroke 64, had lived. His tiny cell, a 10 by 6 foot space, was home to all his possessions. A stray mat for a bed and three thinly worn blankets. With a feeling of guilt, I photographed the metal gate and grill of cell number 5. His outstanding qualities came to light under such barbaric circumstances. Doggedness in campaigning for better conditions and reading materials. Discipline in informally teaching fellow prisoners and warders while studying himself. Diligence and resourcefulness in how he penned his experiences. Those drafted manuscripts were hidden in flower beds to eventually become published after his release in his inspirational autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom. Fast forward some months to the evening of the summer solstice of 2003 and his extended walk onto the grand giant stage, that other field of dreams, Croke Park. The very same Nelson Mandela was the honorary keynote speaker on the occasion of the opening ceremony of the 11th Special Olympic World Games the first ever to be held outside of the United States. A stellar cast of national sporting and international dignitaries, including our own President Mary McAleese, flayed, faded into the background as Mandela, then approaching his 85th birthday, was helped onto the stage. He spoke of his immense privilege at being present. Special Olympics is telling testimony of the indestructibility of the human spirit and of our capacity to overcome hardship and obstacles. You, the athletes, are ambassadors of the greatness of humankind. You inspire us to know that all obstacles to human achievement and progress are surmountable. 
your achievements remind us of the potential to greatness that resides in all of us. What profound words coming from a man who not only talked the talk, but truly walked the walk. I felt that his presence and the values he represented had significant parallels with the concept of disabilities and the Special Olympic movement. These special athletes were reaching out as individuals to highlight and demonstrate their own freedom, to showcase their ability. This statesman promoted the cause of the underprivileged like no other global messenger before or since. In tandem with the game's motto, let me win, but if I can't win, let me be brave in the attempt. His appearance not only brought history to life, but also shook hands with the flame of hope. Good night, everybody.